greetings, greetings. I am uh, going to continue today with my series on spiritual Israel and the new earth. It's uh, part five. But before that, I wanted to say a few words concerning the tragic, tragic event that took place on May 25th. The death, tragic death of George Floyd uh, really look, looked like murder to me. Um, police officer Derek Chauvin, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, kneeled on, on the neck of George Floyd, according to this Wikipedia article, 8 minutes and 46 seconds, with 2 minutes and 53 seconds of that occurring after Floyd was unresponsive. So here you have an example, terrible example, of, of somebody who is entrusted with authority to uphold justice doing something unjust, murdering uh, this, this person, really, by kneeling on his neck. And, um, and when, he, when he repeatedly said he could not breathe. And it's such a terrible tragedy. Um, and, and it really is, it is it's a shame. And it's also, and it, it, not only is it a, is a tragedy in itself that the murder of George Floyd in this, in this terrible way at, at, at a time like this, just one problem after the other, you have the COVID-19 and then you have this and we already, uh, you know, we're living in such times of, of civil unrest, social unrest, economic unrest. Uh, and we and he was a father of two daughters, so obviously his daughters are suffering at this time. A lot of people suffering, a lot of pain and anger and civil unrest and we just need to pray for healing we need to pray for healing during these uh these tragic times such such tragic events that are happening in this world reminding us that that true perfect justice will only come from god and we look forward to a world to come reminding us of that world to come that we need but this this fragmented society we live in this broken world that we live in is going to continue and i'm reminded of the feet of iron mixed with clay in the book of daniel chapter 2 which really when we study that chapter what what that what that um what that chapter reveals is that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream where he saw this image with the head of gold, chests of silver, thighs of bronze, legs of iron, feet of iron mixed with clay. But then that image was destroyed when this rock that was not made by human hands struck the statue in the feet and shattered it. And so what is revealed in that in that chapter, what Daniel revealed is these were these were the kingdoms of the earth. Babylon was the first. And as we study the Bible, we learn the second is Medo-Persia and Greece, then, then pagan Rome. And then the rising up of the divided kingdoms and, and the period of papal Rome. And this is the period we're in now. And all of these kingdoms of the earth, all of the governments of the world will ultimately be shattered when God establishes his everlasting kingdom and there will be no more injustice. There will be no more treating of people like they are not our brothers and sisters. Like they're not even human in the in the case of George Floyd in that tragic case, and the Bible reveals 
that all of us, ultimately, we have one, one father, one mother, Adam and Eve. One father and one mother, Adam and Eve. And we're ultimately all brothers and sisters. All brothers and sisters. And um, so when, when, we, when, we, when we see these things, these distressful things, these, these disheartening, these, these, these circumstances that are happening in our world, tragic case, it reminds me of Eric Garner. Um, case that took place 2014 you know, and who said he could not breathe and also was killed like that. And we need to pray for the police officers. We need to pray for the police officers. Obviously, obviously, um, that's a very difficult job to uphold and there are many officers who are trying their hardest to do such a, a, a difficult job. Um, putting their lives on the line, very difficult job. And so when somebody who, who has that, that task in society abuses their power, as is in this case here, when someone with that, that authority and power uh, abuses their power and does not treat a fellow a fellow human being, a fellow member of the race of humanity, the human race, as this is only, only one race, ultimately. There's only one race. It's a human race. And that we all go back to Adam and Eve. And when a when a person is is treated in this way where they where they are um dehumanized and 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 uh, and really uh, murdered is what it, what it was. It is a reminder of the broken the brokenness of the world that we live in, and we look forward to to the world to come. We look forward to the world to come. Uh, God only God can weigh the motives of the heart. I don't know what in the world was going on in the mind of this officer. What in the world was going on in his mind? I can't weigh the motives of the heart. None of us can. We all see in part. But a lot of people are angry and enraged and emotions are running high during these times. And we need to be prayerful uh, concerning these times that we are in. Because... Because... Um, things are really falling apart. Now, when we look in the book of Revelation, we, we understand if we study, and we study about the mark of the beast, and we study about that threefold union that will develop. And we look at Revelation 13, for example, and we can see control over who can buy and sell. Bond and free, rich, poor, woman and man, everyone having to receive that mark. We understand that Satan has a counterfeit plan for restoring unity in this world, but it is a counterfeit. True unity can only come from the Holy Spirit. And so we need to we need to pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit in times like these. We need to pray for the family and friends of George Floyd. We need to pray for that. We need to pray for the unrest uh, uh, and the civil unrest and the difficult uh, situation, the difficult environment of planet Earth, of planet Earth. And let us pray for that before I continue. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to just pray about this matter. Terrible tragedy that took place, and we pray for your healing. We pray for your healing, Heavenly Father. Pray for the family of George Floyd, Lord. We know, we know that he, George is in your almighty loving hands. In your all, resting in your almighty loving hands as every all of the issues of life are in your hands ultimately and every person is in your hands Lord so we want to pray for him for his family for all those affected we want to pray for those who are really moved by emotion Heavenly Father we pray for your spirit to prevail because one of the things we know of the fruit of your spirit we read about in Galatians chapter 5 
22 and 23, self-control. And you, you always move your people, Lord, to have self-control, to glorify you in all we do. So we just want to pray because we know emotions are running high. We know that there is a lot of anger and rage and so on and so forth. And um, Lord, we just need to wait upon you. Need to wait upon you. We know, Lord Jesus, that when you were here, there was a lot of emotion and anger and unrest at the abuses of the Roman government. And a lot of people wanted to take action. And there were those who wanted you, Lord, to, to join with the, who wanted you to, 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 to take a stand. Join with the zealots. But Heavenly Father, we need to understand that you are your ways are not our ways and you are ultimately the one in control and you give guidance and we need to wait upon you and we need to pray to you and we need to pray for guidance we need to pray for healing we need to pray heavenly father for justice and we ultimately look forward for the justice that will come when you lord jesus burst the clouds come again Take your people, put those who have not received you to sleep, and for a thousand years, your people will have the opportunity to investigate the books, to understand fully your justice, to understand fully who you are, and then to return to this earth, and you, Lord Jesus, you, Heavenly Father, will destroy all wickedness. And we look forward to that new heaven and that new earth where there shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying nor any more pain for the former things will have passed away. We look forward to that. But we pray for the healing. We pray for guidance. We also want to pray, Heavenly Father, for the officer and those officers involved for their, for their healing as well, Lord. Lord Jesus, when you were on the cross, you said, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And we know, Lord Jesus, you died for every human being. You died for every human being. We want to pray for, for all those involved. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, as I said, we, we look forward, and this is just again, just as the coronavirus, just as the coronavirus is a reminder, and these tragic events are reminders of the brokenness of the world that we live in we look forward we look forward to the world to come let me move my picture in that corner there and continue here and i spent some time talking about that but i want to talk of the new earth that we look forward to i want to talk about what we have to look forward to in christ now now last time i began to speak about the stoning of Stephen and a judgment is to be pronounced. Why? Why do I say that? That the stoning of Stephen, because as we saw last time and we'll continue to study on this time, we begin to explore this last time, Christ, Christ is seated. When Christ is seated, a case is being considered. But when Stephen Stephen was unjustly, we've talked about the un, unjust execution of, of George Floyd. Well, there was an unjust execution of Stephen in the Bible, in the book of Acts chapter 7. And when that happened, we see in Acts chapter 7, what happened there? Let's turn to the book of Acts. Acts chapter seven so in acts chapter seven we see in verse 55 and he that is stephen being filled with the holy spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of god and jesus standing at the right hand of god and said look i see the heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. So that means a judgment 
is to be pronounced. We began exploring this last time at the stoning of Stephen, a judge. See, ultimately, God is the perfect judge. We live in a world where we see travesties of justice. And sometimes we see those who are to uphold justice. And I know many police officers, many police officers, many, many, the, the vast majority are trying to do their best to uphold justice. But we see travesties of justice, like, like the case that I have been speaking about. But ultimately, the ultimate justice is going to come from God. Michael, Michael Christ. Christ is usually spoken of as sitting at the right hand of God. Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 6, 205. So Christ is usually spoken of as sitting at the right hand of God. However, here, when Stephen is stoned to death, we see Michael stand up. We see Michael stand up. We see Christ stand up. Christ. Christ and Michael, one of the same as we, uh, one in the same as we began to explore last time. Christ stands when Stephen is stoned. A judgment is decided, a case closed, an action is to be taken. That's what it means when Michael, when Christ stands up. Something is to happen. Concerning Daniel 12.1, here the divine champion Michael in the great controversy takes action to deliver his people so that's what we see in daniel 12 1. here in acts acts chapter 7 we again see christ stand up who is one and the same as michael and he stands up and again an action is to be taken what happened what happened when stephen was stoned probation closes for the jewish nation as a nation though individual probation is still open. So probation closes on the Jewish nation, but not on the individual Jewish person. Not on the individual Jewish person. Let us continue. Now, the ruler decides the fate of the nation. So the official voice of the nation closed the door to the gospel. That's what happened. When Stephen was stoned, that was the closing, the official voice of the nation closed the door to the gospel. They didn't want to hear it anymore. As I had mentioned before that, the gospel was prospering in Jerusalem, as I pointed out in the book of Acts. Very important verse to consider is Acts chapter 6. And we see in Acts chapter 6 and verse 7, the word of God spread and multiplied. The word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. So, so the gospel was after Jesus had been crucified in Jerusalem, the gospel was spreading. But then finally it came to the point where there was no... So it was being tolerated. But then finally, the official voice of the nation, the Sanhedrin, decided we're not going to take it anymore. And there was the stoning of Stephen. Probation closes on the nation, though not on the individuals within the nation. See, the individual Jewish person could still accept the gospel, could still receive the message. But the official pronouncement of the nation is, no, we stand against this. Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Acts chapter 7, 55, 56. So Jesus standing, again, reminds us of Michael standing, because Michael and Jesus are one and the same, as we began looking at last time. And I'll go quickly over this. Uh, we see in Daniel 12, 1, at that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone 
who is found written in the book. Who is Michael? We looked at this last time. We'll look at it again. Uh, yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring an accusation against him, a reviling accusation. He dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. This is Jude 1 9. So Michael is the archangel. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels. Again, Michael is the archangel, and he is leading the angels. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. Revelation 12, 7. Uh, he even exalted himself. So this enemy, the little horn enemy in the book of Daniel chapter 8. and verse 11, it says, he even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host. The prince of the host is Michael. And by him, the daily sacrifices were taken away and the place of his sanctuary is cast down. So Michael is the prince of the host. Michael is the archangel. Let's continue again. Who is Michael? We see in Joshua chapter 5, starting in verse 13, 13 to 15, Michael is the commander of the army of the Lord. Now let's take a look here again. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn and his in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And we saw that that's Michael, as Michael the archangel, the commander of the army of the Lord. And Joshua did what? Fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? So the commander of the army of the Lord is Michael and is worshipped and is his Lord. He's worshipped. It would have been a sin if Joshua worshipped anyone other than God. So this is God the Son. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so, reminding us of what Moses did. Reminding us of what Moses did. Uh, as we see in Exodus chapter 3. Let's look at Exodus chapter 3 once again, going over what we looked at last week. Uh, verse 2. Let's quickly go over this. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So who is in the midst of the bush? Angel of the Lord. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight. Why does the bush, uh, why, why the bush does not burn? So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. So God was in the midst of the bush. The angel was in the midst of the bush. And God was in the midst of the bush. And it is Michael the archangel who is God as Joshua worshipped him. And he said, here, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take the sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy. Again, reminding us of what Joshua did when he worshipped Michael commander of the armies of God. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon who? Upon God. And once again, then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am, has sent me to you. And this reminds us of John 8, 58, when Jesus identified himself as the I am that was before Abraham. Before Abraham was I am, John 8, 58. So we have a direct connection between Joshua chapter 5, Exodus chapter 3, and what Jesus said, showing us that Michael is Jesus. Just go over what we took a look at last time. Who is Michael? Again, Daniel 8, 11. He magnified himself to the prince of the host. So this little horn enemy was magnifying himself even to the prince of the host. That is Michael. So Michael is the prince of the host, according to Daniel 8, 11. Michael is Messiah the prince, according to Daniel 9, 25. Michael is Michael your prince, according to Daniel 10, 21. Michael is the Prince of the Covenant, according to Daniel 11, 22. Michael says, stand up, the great prince. 
according to Daniel 12, 1. So clearly, Michael is Jesus. And so Jesus stood up. Also is mentioned as, well, this is in the future, obviously, Daniel 12, 1. But Jesus stood up when Stephen was stoned. Mike, what about the word archangel? Again, Strong's Concordance looked at this last time. Angel is a messenger, a messenger. Now, this is, again, Strong's Concordance, a messenger. That's what an angel is, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And again, reveals to us ambassador, angel, king, messenger from an unused root, meaning to dispatch as a deputy, a messenger specifically of God. That is an angel, also a prophet, a priest, or teacher, ambassador, Angel, king, messenger, and again, uh, this is from the Bible Hub. So it could be a human messenger. Doesn't necessarily have to be a created, simply messenger. And yes, Jesus was a messenger. He is the messenger, and he is the message. He is the word made flesh. Michael, the archangel. So here we see that the word is also used in the Greek. The word for messengers is angels as the bible uh, hub reveals here after john's messengers left jesus began to speak to the crowd about john what do you what did you go out in the wilderness to see a reed swayed by wind so john's messengers in this passage were called angels and so this is uh luke 7 24 so as it is revealing here Properly, a messenger or delegate, either human or heavenly. And we could even go further that in the case of Christ, Christ is an, an uncreated, uncreated being, but was a messenger and was the message, the living word, and a messenger for the Father. As we saw in, or as John 14, 9 reveals, Jesus revealed that if you've seen me, You've seen the Father. So he is the living message from the Father. Who is Michael? Michael, the prince of the host, the commander of the armies of God. Michael is worship. So Michael is God. So we're talking about God the Son. Joshua takes sandals off his feet on holy ground before him. Moses takes sandals on holy ground before the angel in the midst of the bush, who is also the Lord, who is the I Am. But we are not supposed to worship a mere angel. And Joshua, was Joshua breaking the com commandment of God? No, because, because Michael is God. Now I, John, now let's see what we're reading here. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And then he said to me, see that you do not do that. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren the prophets and of those who keep the words of this book worship god so according to revelation uh, 22 um, an angel a mere angel a created angel would have not allowed himself to be worshiped however michael allowed it when joshua did it because again michael is god michael the archangel is god the son and yet he is an angel in that he is a messenger. He is the messenger and he is the message from the Father. Who is Michael? Michael is Messiah, the prince, the prince of the host, the archangel, the I am who was before Abraham, as we saw, the one Joshua worshipped, the one Moses met in the burning bush, the messenger of the Father, the living message, John 14, 9, John 1, 14, and Michael is God the Son. Okay. So when Michael stands, well, here we see Michael stands. Jesus stands. They're one and the same. Michael stands at the end. Jesus stands. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Romans 14.10, though, says, you then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. So here we read, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And then we read, 
God's judgment seat. And so again, we know that Christ is God the Son. The Bible tells us in Daniel 7.10, A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, that is, unto God. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. A judgment was set. The books were opened. The judgment was set. The books were opened. And we see, according to the Bible hub once again here, that the court, court, was seated. So when the court is in session, when the investigation is taking place, the court is seated. The books are opened. So Jesus stood at the stoning of Stephen. The voice of the nation, the Sanhedrin, sealed its fate. They said, we don't want to tolerate anymore this gospel message had Stephen stoned. What happened at that point when Stephen was stoned? Prophecy was sealed. The fulfillment of the predictions connected with the first coming of the Messiah at the time specified in the prophecy gives assurance that the other features of the prophecy, notably the 2300 prophetic days, will be precisely fulfilled according to the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 4. Again, who is Michael? Well, Jesus said in John 8, 58, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am, and as I showed, that connects us directly to Exodus chapter 3 and to the end of Joshua chapter 5, showing us that it was Michael, that it was Jesus, who Moses met and who Joshua met. And so, therefore, Michael and Christ are one and the same. Why did they want to stone Jesus? Why did they want to stone him when he said that? They took up stones to throw at him, but he himself hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. In John chapter 8. And that was a, that was a penalty for blasphemy, according to Leviticus 24.16. So they, they knew what Jesus was saying. They knew he was claiming to be divine, that he was claiming to be God, God the Son. They knew that what he was saying. They didn't, they weren't going to stone him for nothing. They were going to stone him because they thought he was blasphemy. We are not stoning you for a good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. That's what blasphemy is, when a mere man claims to be God. John 10, 33. And also, according to what Mark 2, 5 through 7 shows us, blasphemy is claiming the right to forgive sins. But Jesus can claim those things because he is God the Son and he can forgive sins. But these are what we understand blasphemy to be, according to the Bible. Now, according to the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 4, it tells us, For about three and a half years, the, authority, the authorities in Jerusalem tolerated the preaching of the apostles, but their spite was finally translated into decisive action in the stoning of Stephen, the first Christian martyr, and a general persecution that then broke upon the church. Okay, until this time, the apostles and other Christian workers appear to have confined their efforts largely to the immediate vicinity of Jerusalem. So, before the stoning of Stephen, they were really just focusing on Jerusalem. It was the stoning of Stephen and the persecution that followed, according to the beginning of Acts chapter 8, that really dispersed the message, and eventually it went to the Gentiles. And so, we'll see here in the book, uh, the Bible commentary here, uh, chap uh, volume 4, again, page 32, Gabriel came to reassure him, that is Daniel, of the restoration of his people. See, these things were being revealed to Daniel. The restoration of his people. The eventual coming of the Messiah, but said the angel, Messiah would be rejected and cut off because of the abominations of Israel and Jerusalem. And the temple would once more lay waste. 
So in the end of Daniel chapter 9, Gabriel revealed a prophecy to help Daniel understand the beginning of the 2300 evenings mornings mentioned in Daniel 8.14. to help Daniel to understand the vision of the evening's mornings of Daniel chapter 8. Gabriel gave him this vision to Daniel, help him really understand it. Now that vision was the vision of the 490 that revealed the beginning of the 2300. And the beginning was the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem which was 457 B.C., according to Ezra 7.7, because that's when the, the decree of Artaxerxes to restore and rebuild Jerusalem happened, Ezra 7.7. So 457 B.C. was the beginning of the 2300-day prophecy, or the 2300-year prophecy, and the 490-year prophecy. But the 490-year prophecy really focused in on the Jewish nation, on Jerusalem, and it would reveal that Jesus would come 
Jesus would be rejected, the gospel would be rejected, and that would be the end of the 490, and that would happen at the stoning of Stephen. So the 70 weeks, the 490 years, were determined upon the Jews, starting 457 and ending 34 A.D. Ending 34 A.D. So, at that point, at that point, probation closed on the nation. As we saw, Michael stood, 34 A.D., Michael stood. Uh, that's Jesus stood, Acts 7.56. So, probation closed on the nation, though, but as I said, though not on the individual. So, no longer would the, would the Jewish nation be the vessel that God would use to bring his message to the world. No longer would literal Israel be that vessel, though members of the Jewish nation would be part, would clearly be part of the church, which would be the vessel that God would use, or spiritual Israel. So those Jewish people that stayed true to the leading of the Holy Spirit were part of spiritual Israel, those who held true, and the Gentiles would be joined into, grafted into spiritual Israel, and that is the church, the church of Jew and Gentile, and that would be the vessel that God would use now, because the official voice of the Jewish nation was to reject the gospel, though Jewish people, many, would accept the gospel, being those branches that would not be broken off. That, that The Jewish people that stayed true to the leading of the Holy Spirit truly stayed true to the message of God throughout the Bible and to use the language of Romans chapter 11, they were those branches that were not broken off and the Gentiles would be grafted into spiritual Israel, the church. So the church is spiritual Israel of Jew and Gentile. Okay, so the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, volume 4, 27-28. I'm going to look at some things. So, Israel in Palestine. So God had situated Israel in Palestine. Why? crossroads of the ancient world to reach the world with the truth now talking about literal israel now literal israel was to reach the world with the truth their success based on and including what holiness of character adherence to god's law upholding his principles so if they did those things they would have success They would have health. They would have health by adhering to biblical health laws and principles. They would have superior intellect. Superior intellect is the result of following God's standard. And in and in many ways, we, we can we can we can look at these things and see that God's message is holistic. God's message is holistic. And, and as a result of, of, uh, of adhering to his word, we grow in these things. And, and even now, when we look at the Jewish, uh, the Jewish people, we, we can definitely see great intellect um, among, among them, them uh, among the Jewish people, even now. Um, there is a, a blessing there is a blessing that comes um, from doing things God's way. We look at, 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 at uh, Israel as a nation in the Middle East, and we could see it prospering. We could see it prospering. However, however, all of that prosperity for the Jewish nation is only a shadow of what would have been, of what would have been had they remained true had they remained true. But even now, as I said, probation did not close on the individual. Probation did not close on the individual. 
Now let's continue here. Skill in agriculture and animal husbandry would have also been the result of doing things uh, in accordance with God's law and, and, and being true to the covenant. According to the Bible, Commentary, Volume 4, 27-28, superior craftsmanship, unparalleled prosperity. Again, we see we do see prosperity in the Jewish uh, people as a whole, but again, only a shadow of what would have been, of what would have been had the nation remained true to the covenant of God. So unparalleled prosperity, obedience to the law of God would make them marvels of prosperity before the nations of the world, living witnesses to the greatness and majesty of God. And again, we see these vestiges, we see vestiges of these blessings when we look at uh, the, the Jewish nation even now. We do see vestiges of these blessings. Clearly, national greatness as individuals and as a nation, God proposed to furnish, to furnish the, um, the people of Israel with every facility for becoming the greatest nation on earth. So imagine what could have been, what could have been had they remained true as a nation, though many individuals had, had accepted the gospel, but had they remained true as a nation and accepted the Messiah, how, what would have happened? And they had that second chance as the prophecy of Daniel revealed, Daniel 9, but they rejected the Messiah. Israel was to be a light to the Gentiles. Through faithfulness to God, Israel's prosperity would draw nations to its God, and they, in turn, could receive the same blessings. That was the, the purpose that God had for Israel. Jeremiah 3.17, At that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered to it to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. No more shall they follow the dictates of their evil hearts. Had Israel remained faithful and accepted Jesus, things would have turned out very differently. Certain prophecies point to how things would have turned out under these conditions. The kings and leaders played a great role in Israel's failure. And so, conditional prophecies. And so when we look at the Old Testament, we see conditional prophecies. Again and again, God warned Israel that blessings, blessing goes hand in hand with obedience and that a curse accompanies disobedience. And many references there. Seventh-day Adventist Bible commentary shows us that. Deuteronomy 28, 15, 68, curses on disobedience. Owing to the failure of the Jews as God's chosen people, many of the prophecies of the Old Testament, such as those affirming the worldwide mission of Israel and the ingathering of the Gentiles, those pointing forward to the eternal rest in Canaan, and those promising deliverance from her enemies, have never been and can never be fulfilled to them as a nation. Though individuals, as I said, can receive those fulfillments as made to the church. However, a remnant of Jewish believers will be saved in being united with Gentiles in the body of Christ, the church, in the body of Christ. Christ and the founding members of the Christian church were all Jews. Christianity would grow out of Judaism in the church. Judaism would find its completion. Well, there's much more to be said on this matter, but I'm going to stop there and I'm going to stop with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for welcoming all people, for it was always your plan to welcome all people 
to receive salvation. To receive salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, a church being of Jew and Gentile, spiritual Israel, Lord. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father. and We want to uphold your law, your standard, your ways. And especially in the trying times that we are in, we are reminded, Lord, of the hope that we have in you and the world to come. The new heaven and the new earth, where there shall be no more sorrow, nor crying, nor any more pain, and all the former things will have passed away. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.